A review of the year for the Ferrari Driver Academy student Jules Bianchi. The Frenchman, who came second in the World Series, takes us through a season in which he was also the third driver with Scuderia Forzinha, for whom he will be on duty in Austin next weekend for the 19th round of the Formula One World Championship. Coming to your 2012, uh, you've been uh, several times uh, the first driver uh, driving on uh, Friday morning for Forcilia. How much important was this experience for your career? I think it's been really important. Uh, I learned a lot. I drove uh, a lot in the previous year in the young driver test in Abu Dhabi or Rereds, but it's not the same as uh, driving the race weekend because you have a lot more pressure and uh, anyway you are, you are in the race car so it's, uh, it's different but I think I grew up a lot and now I'm ready to, to drive in a, in, a, in a real race. While your racing 2012 uh, was in uh, World Series, uh, you finished second uh, fighting for the championship uh, until uh, the last race. Any regret? Well I think it's been uh, yes difficult because uh, as you said I was uh, fighting until the, rest, the last race. Uh, Especially the, the really last race, I was uh, going to win, and uh, and I had an issue with uh, the the race, the championship leader. So um, this is a uh, part of the joke, and uh, now I'm just uh, going ahead, uh, thinking about next year, and that's it. Just few weeks to Christmas time. What uh, do you expect Santa Claus will bring to you? Well, I hope I will have uh, an official seat for next year for sure. This is uh, this is my uh, my dream. Do you think you deserve it? I think I did a good season in World Series, uh, finishing second, even if the target was to win. And uh, I did a good season with Forsinia as well, so yes, I think I, uh, I am now ready and I now uh, um, deserve the, the seat in Formula One. Being an official Formula One Ferrari driver is still uh, your dream? Yes, of course, it's, uh, it's my dream. Uh, I have been working a lot for that. Now I, uh, I am a third driver of South Africa India as well, so I just try to, to become a race driver and then my dream for sure will be to race uh, with Ferrari one day. One full day of testing at the simulator uh, at the Austin uh, racetrack. What is your feeling? Well, let's say that the uh, Austin race track is really interesting. Uh, you have a lot of quick corners, so the first part uh, is really similar to the, the first part in Japan. And uh, the Beckett's in Silverstone, so I think it's going to be really interesting in terms of driving. And then you have a lot of uh, slow corners as well, so I think it's, uh, it's a really, really new, it's a new track, which is uh, really interesting. It was on uh, one of the best tracks I have, uh, have seen now. All the Ferrari fans want to know only one thing. Will Ferrari be competitive there? I think we are working really hard for that. Uh, we just uh, try to improve, improve the car for, the, for this race. It's really important for the, the rest of the championship and I think we can be confident for, for this race as well. In terms of overtaking, do you think uh, they will be easy or difficult uh, at Austin? Well, anyways, in Formula 1 it's always difficult to overtake, but I think in Austin you have uh, two big stops and uh, in between you have a long, long straight. So you can, have a, you can have some overtake and uh, I think it will be uh, a lot of opportunities in the race to, to overtake a people. For a driver, how much important is to prepare a race on a completely new track at the simulator? It's really important because uh, when you arrive on, you arrive on Friday you have to be uh, on the limit immediately otherwise you won't be uh, as competitive as you wish in, uh, in qualifying so you, you really need to be, to be ready when you arrive. That's why the simulator is one of the best uh, is the best option to, to learn the tracks and to be ready for the, for the race. After a five years break, Formula One returns to the United States and the new circuit of the Americas in Austin, which was opened last October. The president Bobby Epstein talks us about the futurist in Texan track with the help of a lap on a simulator with Jules Bianchi.
So the, the 25 story tower far exceeded uh, both our hope from a design standpoint of creating something unique and almost iconic uh, to creating something that's functional from a wayfinding standpoint to a tourist experience to the true fact that what it does is it lets you see a Formula One track like nowhere else in the world. You stand in one place, you can see the whole thing. From a driver's standpoint, turn one is going to be a heck of a, you know, it's it's unique, it's challenging, the forces that you experience going up it versus down, and, and uh, I really admire what they have to go through. Uh, turn 15 might be the greatest seat in the world to watch uh, Formula One race. Uh, I truly think it may be. Just for the fact that you you have so many vantage points and so many different uh, challenges that the driver faces. You see them going through hills uh, in one direction, and then you catch them on the track coming back through their highest speed straight. You'll see them at 220 miles an hour, and you see them hit a hairpin turn, and uh, then you see them come through a chicane section. I mean, you'll see 10 turns and ones for one seat, and it's where the it's not just scream and fast action. It's it's also technical. The towers really become an integral part, and, and when we are out here, we realize it's such a focus. Uh, I think it's ex really exceeded our expectations. Originally, it was to create something iconic that when you stood in front of it, you identified yourself with where you were, and it's become really functional in a lot of ways. Certainly, one is just the fact that it gives you a grounded feeling when you're here of a, of a position. Where are you? So when you're on a massive site like this, you know, the track itself is on 380 acres, it's 1,200 acres overall. It gives you a real sense of perspective of where you are. I think that what we've done outside the lines of the racetrack is combined to make one feature that I am absolutely most proud of, which is the experience when people come out and just see all there is to do and how we've made the most use of the land and facilities and what they can experience over the three days. Uh, I'm really proud of that. Built in less than two years in Travis County, near the Texas capital, Austin, the Circuit of the Americas passed its last inspection as 50th stage the United States Grand Prix back on September 25th. The track is over five and a half kilometers long and runs anti-clockwise. It features over 20 corners and goes through a change of 41 meters. Many of the turns take their inspiration from other tracks, such as Istanbul's Turn 8, and the Maggots Packet Chapel complex from Silverstone. It took 1,300,000 hours to build, having been designed by German architect Hermann Thiel, who has previously designed six other modern facilities. This will be the TLT United States Grand Prix, the first after an absence of five years. Also will be the eight track to host a USA Grand Prix and the tent in the United States to stage a Formula One race. Here we are in Austin, the new track for Formula One. Uh, coming through the first corner, the track is going uphill, so it's uh, breaking late, really late. Uh, going down to second gear, then you're going out. You have a, a right corner which is flat, flat out with the RS. Then you're going to a, a couple of corners where are really exciting, uh, left, uh, right, left again, and then uh, going down to fifth gear. Uh, another quick corner on the left, going down to fourth gear now, then back to second gear. Uh, you accelerate, put DRS, going back to a really late and uh, hard break, uh, going to the second gear. Now you have to, to be focused on the exit because you have a really long straight, which is uh, really important to be quick. Use DRS and KS. Then you will arrive to another really uh, big stop, so uh, you will have to go down to to second gear and arrive at uh, 3, uh, 315 kph, so really quick. Take the inside curb, take the outside curb, and then you have a right and another series of, uh, of, of corners who are really tricky, so you just have to be careful about, uh, about your line. Uh, going down to first gear here. So half now you have a really quick corner which is uh, 240 kph uh, it's gonna be flat after that you have the two last corners uh, first one which is in fifth gear 200 kph and the last one in second gear and then a, a big a big straight again for the for the first corner in 
the section devoted to the Formula One alphabet, the Scuderia Ferrari engineers explained the meaning of the terms compound, DRS, oil and qualifying. The name of compound is coming from the rubber has so many components in, in, the, in the rubber. Because, for example, thread rubber and sidewall rubber uh, contents are basically different. That's why uh, we call the rubber uh, as a compound. Then, basically, uh, thread rubber, including the, the polymer rubber and the oil, it is a main uh, ingredient. Then, another thing is uh, sulfur and many ingredients in the rubber. That for please think about the uh, rubber is black. The reason why rubber is black is because rubber including the carbon black. Carbon black works for compound very very strong feature. Uh, like that so thread is not only the rubber, for example natural rubber and synthetic rubber and also uh, there are so many ingredients inside. This is a very, very important uh, for designing the rubber. D is for DRS, which stands for Drag Reduction System. The DRS was introduced by the FIA in 2011 as a way of uh, promoting overtaking in Formula One. It works very simply by allowing the rear flap to open a gap to the main plane and hence reduce uh, the downforce and or as a consequence also the drag that it creates. So very simply, by um, the driver pressing a button, the flap opens up like this and all the downforce that the wing is generating reduces a lot. And as the downforce reduces, so does the drag. And when the drag reduces, we can increase speeds by up to 10, 15 kph. Um, and obviously this makes overtaking uh, a lot easier. During the race, the driver is allowed to use the DRS only when he's one second or less behind a car in front. And he can only use it uh, in dedicated areas around the track where the FIA allow to use the DRS. This is during the race. During qualifying or during free practice, the driver can use the DRS um, as he wishes. And uh, he can simply press a button and the flap opens up and uh, he gets a speed advantage. Oil is fundamental for the correct functioning of engine and gearbox. It has three main characteristics. The first one is to reduce the wear of the metal parts that are moving inside these two parts. The second is that uh, it has to remove the heat coming from the contact of this part uh, running. The third one is to reduce the friction. The first two are important for the reliability of the car and uh, there is a lot of job involving this because uh, to homologate the new oil, uh, the job done at the dyno is very long. We have to use and run engines and gearbox for a long time. Then we have to disassemble them, check every part, measure. And after this long process, we can homologate an oil to be used at the track. The third feature, the re reducing the friction, is important for the performance because uh, reducing the friction makes uh, the engine giving more power and so affecting also uh, the overall result of the car. Uh, reducing the friction is one part uh, that uh, is important at the moment also because according to the current regulation, engine is frozen, so we cannot redesign from year to year. While engine development is free, so our partner Shell is involved to do his best to propose uh, new oils and so helping us to win more races. Qualifying session is on uh, Saturday after FP3 and normally, on, let's say that in Europe, uh, normally it's at 2 o'clock. Qualifying is uh, the one that uh, then decide the grid order for the race. The qualifying is uh, divided in three parts, Q1, Q2 and Q3. The first one is 20 minutes, the second one 15 minutes and Q3 just 10 minutes. It's uh, divided in uh, three parts because uh, 
every qualifying single qualifying session means that you have always less car so the first time you have 24 cars in the current uh, formula one and then seven cars will be out after q1 and then you, you get 17 cars for the q2 and just the top 10 cars for the q3 obviously the, the first one will be the one on pole position the day after. Scuderia Ferrari Racing News will be back in December with a review of the season and a special on the Valencia Finale Mondiali.